Gary Pratt here with Control Sphere Engineering. In this video, we will show the traditional way to manage alarms, explain why this technique is not suited to newer object based programming, and show how the standard COTSIS alarm manager can be enhanced to support object based programming. Before you view this video, it is important to understand object based programming and why it offers far greater productivity and reliability over traditional PLC programming techniques. If you haven't already done so, please view my demo of object-oriented industrial programming or my OOIP tutorial delivered at the March 2021 CODESYS Tech Talk. Either can be found by searching the web for object-oriented industrial programming. CODESYS provides a built-in alarm manager that has very good integration into the CODESYS visualization. The CODESYS Alarm Manager is designed to work best with traditional task-based procedural PLC programming where the alarms are specified in a series of lists after the control design is complete. Unfortunately, creating and maintaining this list is tedious and error-prone, and the resulting complexity limits the use of the Alarm Manager to smaller PLC designs. The tool is definitely not well suited for today's larger and more complex PLC designs. Fortunately, the Control Sphere Object Oriented Alarming Library provides a way to adapt the CODESYS Alarm Manager to modern programming techniques while maintaining the best features of the Alarm Manager, such as alarm classifications, alarm archiving, and alarm visualizations. The first step to use this library, or any other library, is to add the library to the application. This library includes templates which will be used in the next step. The next step is to add the traditional alarm manager to the application, and then create three alarm groups for error, warning, and info. And then import the templates into these groups. Then, to add alarming to an object, follow these one-time steps on a new function block. In this example, we will create a motor function block. First, have the function block extend the OOA equipment base and then implement the OOA alarm interface. Then, implement the interfaces on that function block by right-clicking on the function block and selecting Implement Interfaces. And then, follow the instructions in the declaration area of the method. Unfortunately, CODESYS does not allow comments in the implementation area, so they are in the declaration area instead. The comments mention the steps with the alarm manager, which we have already done, and it shows how to declare the alarms. For this demo, we are going to have two alarms, one for the high level and one for the high level rate of change. So we first declare instances of alarm trigger structure for both alarms, level alarm and rate of change alarm. We will then go into the register my alarm method, copy the example from the comment section and modify it for our application. The example code shows how to do one each error warning and info alarm and alarms which belong to no group, one group, and multiple groups. For this example, we are going to do one for info and one for a warning alarm. The level alarm registration returns the information to the level alarm variable that we declared earlier. We will make the level alarm of class info. My path is picked up from the equipment base and is for diagnostic purposes. It's optional. We will give this alarm a fixed message starting with the object name and my name is also picked up from the equipment base. We will then repeat the process for the rate of change alarm, but since we are going to be dynamically adding on to the message, we will only put the name in the base message. We can assign it an arbitrary group number of one or greater. 
Normally I would create an enumeration to use meaningful names instead of meaningless numbers, but for this demo we will just keep it simple. Next we will add the alarm evaluation to the function block. For demo purposes we need to add some stimulus. For that we will make a sinusoidal level signal and an integrator to evaluate its rate of change. Next we will evaluate the level and generate the level alarm. While this can be done in any language, I would often recommend block-based CFC, but for this demo we will use structured text. The alarm is evaluated with a conditional and the alarm is activated with a call to the OOA library alarm function. The function is passed the state of the alarm and the structure that was returned when the alarm was registered. When passed a true, the alarm function will display the message in the alarm table that was specified when the alarm was registered. We do the same for the rate of change of alarm, except for this one we use the alarm msg function and compose a dynamic message. For this we will use the concat function to build a message from some fixed text and some dynamic text. The dynamic text in this case is the level at the time the rate of change limit was exceeded. This dynamic message text will be concatenated to the end of the fixed message specified when the alarm was registered. And that's it. That's the entire one-time procedure necessary to add alarms to an object. From here on, every time that object is used, it will handle its own alarms. There is never any need to create or update an alarm table. Just declare an instance of the function block and you are done. Easy peasy, as the kids say these days. So at this point, we use the CodeSys Alarm Manager as usual. We could add actions and different acknowledgements to the alarm classes, configure the alarming archive, and use the standard visualization banner and table, as we're showing here. When we go online and run, we see the two alarms appear in the banner and the table. There is no need to do anything with the alarm manager. The alarms are set up and configured inside the object, almost like magic. And if you've ever had to find a bug in the alarm table or manually verify an alarm list in a design review, I think you'll agree it is almost like magic. But let's add some more motors to demonstrate the real power of object-oriented alarming. And to make this more interesting, let's add some parameters to the motor, like an alarm group and the speed of the level stimulus. We change the stimulus generator to use the PT parameter and also go back into the alarm registration to use the alarm group parameter. We then instantiate four motors and give them different parameters. Hopefully you have all seen the video on object-oriented industrial programming and have a good idea of how to use the ControlSphere Central Configuration Service Library to configure your objects. For this demo, we configure the parameters in the declaration. We can do that here because this design hierarchy is only one level deep. Please watch my CodeSys Tech Talk tutorial for more information on why this won't work in the general case. Here we are placing four motors with motor 1 and 2 in alarm group 1 and motor 3 and 4 in alarm group 2 and each with its own stimulus timing. Then we call each motor. And there you have it. It's just that easy to put four motors into a plant. Going back to the visualization, we add lamps for each of the two different groups and a lamp for each alarm in each of the four motors. Notice the call to is group triggered that is made to determine if an alarm in a group is active. We also add a visualization from the OOA library that is helpful for diagnosing alarm issues. Going back online, notice the alarms for the three new motors all appear in the alarm banner and the alarm table. Again, all without any need to create, maintain, or verify any lengthy alarm lists. We could add a thousand more motors and their alarms would just appear. No muss, no fuss. It's just that easy. Also notice the group lamp lights any time either alarm in the group becomes active. And the tables below show information on each alarm and that is handy should any troubleshooting be required. 
I hope we have shown the power of object-oriented alarming and how easy it is to implement in CodeSys using the Control Sphere OOA library. These few minutes of one-time effort we spent adding alarms to the function block will pay dividends forever, saving countless hours and bugs creating and maintaining traditional alarm lists. Object-oriented alarming is a perfect complement to the object-oriented industrial programming and object-oriented visualization described in the tutorial video mentioned earlier. I hope you found this video useful. The OOA library may be obtained from ControlSphere or from the CODESA store. For questions, please drop me a line at gary at controlsphere.pro.